insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 73, another one of our Q&A series. This is Friends and Family. I'm your host, <clears throat> excuse me, I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and my insightful and intelligent co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. So, uh, I had thought we had finished up our Q&A series um, a couple of weeks ago when we did our one on existential and religion questions and stuff. And uh, turns out I had this one waiting in the wings as well. So I kind of lied back there saying that was the last one. So, wah, wah, wah. so we're going to have a little bit of fun today. We're going to talk about some questions related to friends and family. We're going to get to know you a little bit better. And then we'll finish up with um, – uh, your final thoughts, clothing, closing thoughts, and shout outs like we usually do. All righty. Ready to get going? Mm -hmm. uh, programming note, we are doing this with a tropical storm actually blowing off the coast of New Jersey right now. So hopefully it does not uh, kick up some winds here and uh, knock our power out in the middle of the, of the podcast. Hopefully we can get through the whole podcast. Yeah, that would be bad. Yeah. So uh, uh, here we go. Let's start out with the, the questions. So the first questions that we're going to get into today deal with friends. So we want to find out how you define friendship, what you look forward to in friends, how you treat your friends and so forth. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind as we go through these. All righty. So the first question is name four qualities that you want your friends to have. All righty. So one is I want them to be kind. I don't want them to be mean and end up lowering any of my mental status, like self-esteem or anything like that. I want them to be somewhat loyal so they don't abandon me at the last second, so that'd be nice. I'd also want them to be understanding because, um, especially in my sixth grade year, I tended to have sort of anger issues, but it was mainly due to mood swings that I was dealing with at the time because I had just experienced that and it was a big men and it was a big leap for me. And I didn't exactly stick the landing. Um, and finally, I want them to be uh, kind of crazy. I'm, I don't like people who are kind of sane. And I want people to make me laugh by just being kind of crazy. All right. So, so we've got nice. We've got loyal. We've got crazy. And what was the fourth one? Understanding. Understanding. So of the friends that you have now <clears throat> who unfortunately – under the current conditions, you don't get to see all that often. But of the friends that you have now, do they all meet these qualities? Most of them, yeah. Not all of them have the crazy trait, but they're still enough to make me laugh. They're not exactly... Like, I'm not looking for completely crazy people. I just want people who are humorous in a way. Okay. So human and crazy kind of go hand in hand in that point. Sure. Well, and if they hang around with you long enough, I think your personality kind of seeps into that and... Mm interjects a little bit of that crazy in there. True. All right. So our next question is, would you consider yourself to be more of a shy person or more of an outgoing person? Um, I kind of have a bit of both, but I'd go more towards the shy side, mainly because I'm not in 
intentionally outgoing. Like, the way I met some of my friends, I was the one who would go out. But in other, in other um, instances, they just came to me. So, meeting my friends, I'm kind of going sort of with that standard and also how I interact with them because sometimes I'm not always the first one that texts them. With some of my friends, I am. With others, they just immediately text me or call me. So, in a way, half and half. More on the shy side, though. So, the outgoing side of you, what is it that brings out that outgoing side? Is it boredom? Is it creativity? What is it that makes you an outgoing person? Well, it's sometimes the boredom when I want to hang out with them. And other times it's just because I want to hang out with them and they make me smile and stuff like that. Okay. I, I can understand that. Um, so the next question, uh, kind of the next couple of questions, kind of deal with popularity. Alrighty. Um, everybody, like nobody wants to be unpopular, I, I, I think. I don't, I don't think anyone actually strives to be unpopular in school. Have you ever wanted to be popular? Like when I was in school, I was indifferent whether I was popular or not. I was there to learn. I did what I had to do and I got out of there and did, the, you know, whatever it was that I did. So I never really worried about being popular or getting elected to uh, council, school council, or being the captain of the football team. That was really not my thing. Have you ever wanted to be popular? Probably when I was younger because back then I was way more outgoing than I am now before I had, like, my anxiety kick in and the fear of everything else. Um, so... I'm pretty sure when I was younger, I wanted to be popular. I wanted to have loads of friends, but I mean, in a way, I didn't intentionally want to be the most popular person in school because as I got older, like people at my school, like especially at my elementary school, since I'd gone there for all five years, people had started to know my name more and I had no idea who they were and it felt kind of weird. Um, yeah. And that's kind of how it started my escalation for not exactly wanting to be incredibly popular. Then once all the anxiety kicked in and the fact that people are kind of mean in high in middle school and so on, I kind of lost touch of that. And also the fact that I became much more shy and enclosed and yeah. Okay, well... <clears throat> I guess we're lucky having such a shy person on a podcast like this and opening up. Yeah. Um, so speaking of being popular, of all of your friends, do you have a friend who you consider to be your best friend? Uh, not really, because I hang out with, like, I hang out with a group of friends, but I also have friends in my middle school who are my age, while the group of friends I hang out with are our neighbors and they're a little younger than I am. I don't really have a best friend. I just hang out with the people who I'm good friends with. I really don't have a complete best friend. I have known my one friend Mariah for five years though, I think almost six. Something or along those lines. I've known her for the longest, I think. But so, so Mariah gets seniority in this in well, this question, then. Well, I mean, if we're going by how long I've known them, I've long I've known Mariah the longest. My group of younger friends who are our neighbors, I've kind of known them for around the same time. And some of the people I met in middle school this year, I've only known them for how long I've ever I've met them. Um. I really wouldn't consider any of them to be my best friends, or one of my, one, only one of them to be my best friend. Um, technically, I call all of them my best friends. I don't know if you can have multiple than one because... Hey, you make up your own rules. Yep. So what do you like about all of your best friends? Um, I'll go off with... Um, so my younger friends, which um, there are three of them, and they're all my neighbors, I like that they're able to completely make me laugh, and they're much more wild than some of my other friends who are my age, and I like that... Um, oh, you know, as you get older, yeah. you start to mellow out. Yeah, I like that, like, young energy they still have, and 
Uh, some of their stories are really funny, and I love hanging out with them. I hang out with them more than I hang out with some of my other friends, but I do hang out with them and still talk to all of my friends. Um, for Mariah, I like how she's... For my older friends, I like how they're much more understanding and helpful when I'm going through hard times. Like, more emotionally mature. Yeah, like... I like the aspect that my younger friends are wild, and I like the aspect that my older friends are more mature and men and able to help me out if I have any like mental issues going on. Okay, I think they are. That's a nice balance of qualities that you have there. I think you're very fortunate to have that level balance uh, between your friends. What do you think they like about you? Um. Well, for my younger friends, I'm sort of that older, mature figure in a way. I try to make sure that they understand their decisions, and whenever something's up with them, I try to sort of parent it out and help them overcome it, because sometimes my friends are ups my younger friends are upset, and I want to try to make sure that they open up and that I can do anything I can to help with that. Um... And for my older friends, it's kind of the same thing. They go through stuff that they go th they go through other stuff that the younger kids don't normally go through. That I don't normally understand what they're going through, but I still try to help work it out with them. So you're like the uh, the mommy cat of the litter here, then. <laughs> sort of, I guess. Okay, well, nothing wrong with that. It's always nice when you can help your friends out. Yeah. Um. So, who do you wish? would listen more closely to you? Um, I'd say all my older friends listen very well to me. My younger friends, they kind of, um, I mean, they listen to me. Um, it's just their wild personalities give them the sen the sension to kind of do weird and, in ways, not the best situational stuff. Now, you, do you chalk that up to the age difference in the maturity level or is it something else um i just say that it's just because they're younger and just the fact that i'm older and it's just sort of in a way like it's sort of a parental thing like you know how um when you're a parent and you have kids and you yes and I they <laughs> and they like run around and don't exactly know how the world works, and they have, like, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's sort of, they're more open, um, they're not, they're less, actually, they're less open to the world and all its dangers, and A they- more naive. And, more naive, yeah. yeah. Now, do you think you exhibited some of those same traits yourself when you were younger? Yeah, I wasn't completely cautious as I am now. I definitely didn't know a lot about the world until I was in 6th and 5th grade. That's when I really learned about all of it. Um, and when I was younger, I was... I mean, I was much more social back then, and I didn't really have much fears besides the fact of spiders and bugs and the dark. Um, but now I have a lot of other fears that have built up because of the fact that I got older, and I don't think that my younger friends have actually had that built up yet, so... Okay, well, it's good to see that your fears are evolving. Yep. Do you have any friends right now that you're actually worried about? I mean, any of my friends who I haven't really talked to, my younger friends always keep in touch with me, because, um, they just have that spirit. Um, I haven't talked to my older friends in a little while, though. Sometimes I message them and see if they'll reply, but when they don't, I'm worried, especially since what's going on with the world now, and I'm, I'm just worried about them when, if they don't answer any of the texts, I understand that they might be busy, but if they don't answer after a while, I start getting a bit nervous, especially with, if, like, they had trouble at home and with school and that... All of this was just affecting them, and it just makes me kind of worried, and I don't want them to have, well, I'm just worried at this point. Well, and I think that's kind of a sign of the times. There's a lot of things that are worrying with 
you know, the COVID going on and homeschooling and parents at home or out of work. Um, so, you know, it's nice for you to, to reach out to your friends and keep in touch with them and, you know, follow up with them, make sure they're okay and, you know, try to lift their spirits, I think more than anything else. So, um, there's nothing wrong with, with being worried about the people you care about. Uh, it's that worry that, that helps us get through these times. Mm-hmm. So with all that said and done, all your best friends, you have all these best friends right now. Um, are you happy with the number of friends that you have? Would you like more friends? Would you like less friends? How's that balance working out? Honestly, I'm pretty fine with all my friends I have now. I can relate with something with each of them, and I like the different diverse area I have. I don't think I need more friends, but I'm always open to have more friends if they need someone um, for a friend. Um, but I'm happy with the amount I have now. I'm not looking for any new friends, but if someone needs a friend, then sure, I'll, um, I'll make more room. Okay, well, good to know there's always room for more friends. Yep, it's like the Haunted Mansion with more ghosts. See, and I was going to go with pie. There's always room for more pie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the numerical version or the edible one? Well, the numerical version is always the same. You know, it's always more characters, right? So there's yeah. always room for pie there. Yep. Um, so who in your class do you think is a really good friend to others? Like, who's who's that outgoing one who is always willing to help and is willing to sort of lift people up? That If they see someone's, something's bothering someone, you know, they'll go over and try to console them and, and try to make them feel better. Who do you think is that? Because every class has that kind of person. Who do you think that is, or do you not have one of those in your class? Well, I have multiple classes, so I'm going to refer to my history class with a girl named Summer. Um, Summer actually started out, I think in sixth grade, was a new student in my school. And by the time we were in middle school, I had gotten to know her a bit more. Um, and after me and her got paired on a few projects and we talked more about and we talked more and we learned a bit more about each other every and since we sat next to each other every time I would come in and she would normally be there she'd always say hi to me and I'd say hi to her and we'd talk a little bit and then we'd get to work so That's nice. I definitely think she'd be one of the more outgoing people who would definitely want to help others in need and that's interesting especially if she came in as the as the new kid who didn't grow up with all the other kids i have to imagine it's got to be very difficult to come into a new school and be that new kid, because I never had to do that. Um, it's got to be tough being that new kid and still being outgoing, because you there has to be a lot of awkwardness and a lot of pressure. Um, do you think she had a hard time when she first came in? Were, were people receptive of her outgoing personality? Well, I wasn't entirely sure too much about her, especially when she first came in. I never knew too much about her, and it only started in seventh grade. But um, she looked like she had a good friend base whenever I saw her around, like outside at recess or at lunch. She looked like she was um, still the outgoing person, and people didn't really have a problem with it. That's good. That's good. You don't want to see people that are outgoing get discouraged in difficult situations. Yeah. So we've talked about what makes good friends and are your friends good and, and all that stuff. But there's always the flip side of the coin there. There's always, we've always had bad friends. And I had, you know, I had some bad friends. For me, bad friends were the friends that you thought you could count on. And when the chips were down and you needed to count on them, they weren't there. Um, we're, I'm not talking, when I say bad friends, I'm not talking about friends who do drugs or steal or stuff like that. I'm, I'm talking about friends who don't live up to that expectation that you have of them of being a friend have you ever had any bad friends based on that definition um not that i think about it not that i know of most of my friends were there for me and of course friends come and go um sure do but most of my friends um still live up to my expectations and i don't really set too many high expectations just as long as they understand me and they're willing to accept me and that they're just kind overall and they're able to make me laugh, I'm perfectly fine. Well, that's good. That's good. I have not had 
a lot of bad friends. Uh, so I was fortunate in that. And it seems that you are fortunate as well in not having a lot of bad friends. Yeah, but I did go through sort of a rough patch in sixth grade. Not necessarily with a bad friend. Just fights with some of my good friends. And they were mainly caused by me because... I didn't know how to control my emotions, and a lot of stuff made me upset and angry, and I went through a lot of mood swings. Are you still friends with those friends, though? Yeah, we always made up by the end of the day, and I always had time to calm down, and we're still good friends to this day, so... And that's all that matters. Friends fight, and you know what happens. Mm -hmm. There's disagreements, there's differences of opinions, sometimes it's moods, sometimes it's hormones. But ultimately, the, the friends that are the keepers are the ones that are there still for you at the end of the day, even when you do have these arguments. Yeah. So it's good to see that you were able to rectify those. So we talked about popularity, and I kind of kind of put these out of order. I should have put this one up further. What does it mean to be popular at your school? I'm not entirely sure what the standards are for school at this point. Because I never really seeked a lot of popularity, I'd assume it mean that almost everyone knew about you and you were a good student and that a lot of people wanted to know you, be friends with you, or want to be you, and you had a lot of friends and just, you were overall, um, just super well known. Okay. It's basically sort of being famous, but more, but called popularity and is mainly seen in school. See, as I was growing up, popularity was subjective. So you had different groups. So you had the athletes. Then you had what we called the preppies, the ones that were, you know, the well-to-dos and stuff. Then you had, like, the artsy-fartsy group. Um, and then you had what, what, at the time, we called stoners because they were the ones that would go off and smoke and, you know, they were like the the goth emo ones who would go off and, and sort of do their own thing. And they were kind of the ones that your parents told you not to hang out with sort of, but each of those groups had its own standard for being popular. And I managed to get along with all of them. Cause I, I'm, I just kind of had that kind of personality, I suppose. But each group had a different standard for being popular, like for athletics, you know, the best athletes were the popular ones. You know, for the preppies, uh, you know, it was the guys who had the nicest clothes or the nicest cars or whatever it was. For the geeks, the, the, the ultra smart kids, it was the ones who were all in honor society and stuff. Um, do you have that kind of dynamic at your school there where you've got different uh, factions, let's say? Well, I've never really seen people in cliques because we're all on a schedule and we don't normally go around. The only thing that I could think of was at the lunch table. Like, I sat at a lunch table. I was actually kind of forced to sit at a lunch table with a bunch of girls in seventh grade who I had no idea who any of them really were. And they all seemed to be like, I'm not sure, they were just, I don't know what group to call them. Um, but I just sat with them and I didn't feel like I belonged because I wasn't as talkative as they were. I didn't really talk to them and I just didn't, and I just sat at lo and I just sat eating my lunch alone. Okay. In a way. So then let me ask you, cause, cause clearly you have, I guess your own idea of what it is to be popular. What do you think true popularity looks like? What, what does someone have to do? or B, for them to be popular to you? Well, for s well, I think being popular is being liked, is like how the whole thing is. Because no matter what, I, I think most of the ideas of people wanting to be popular is to get the, um, is to get the satisfaction of others, sort of, like, have, being the one that everyone talks about or being the one that everyone wants to be friends with or something like that. Okay. And it doesn't matter what you do, but all you really... But it, they all have the same goal in the end to try and have as many friends as possible and to, be, and to get their name 
said throughout the school, pretty much. Okay. I, so it's kind of like uh, kind of how people deal with social media now. It's how many likes you get and how many follows you get and stuff like that. I guess so, yeah. Okay, I could, I could see that. So let's change gears a little bit here and talk about helping others. One of the things that, that you'll run into as you get older and you start looking at going into college and stuff like that is community service, volunteering. So a lot of colleges look for that to determine what kind of person you are as an individual. So have you had an opportunity recently to help someone, uh, maybe help somebody tutor someone, uh, help them with their grades? If somebody was having emotional issues or something like that, you were able to help them with that. Have you, have you been able to do anything? Like, I know under the current circumstances, it's very difficult. Um, but have you had an opportunity to do that in the last couple of years? I mean, yeah. Um, especially when I was still in my elementary school. I would help my younger friends if they didn't understand what their homework was or if they had just gotten in t or if someone was being mean to them and I had to try and make sure that they were still trying to be sm that so they would still be happy. With my older friends, it was sort of the same thing. If they had stuff going on, I would try to make sure that they still had a smile on their face and that they were okay and that I could be of service. Um, and I actually have been on FaceTime with my younger friends and two of my younger friends have were um, arguing with each other. Um, I don't know exact I don't know exactly who started it, but they were both kind of reluctant. They had a lot of drama going on, and I wanted to try and help them resolve it. And in the end, they kind of did um, resolve it, at least that I know of right now. They were still kind of fighting, but um, now, from what I know of now, they're still fine. Okay. Well, I think that's all the questions I was going to ask you uh, on Friends. And let's take a little break and we'll come back and we'll get into uh, some of the family questions. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So let's talk family. You've got mommy and myself. Mm -hmm. The cats, obviously. Obviously. Do you have any siblings? Um, I do have my brother, Sam, who we have the podcast for Insights in the Tomorrow. Um, so yeah. So do you consider yourself to be close to Sam? Mm, when we were younger, we used to be much closer um, but after some family drama, he, we, he kind of left, and I kind of continued my older years without him, and then when he started to come back, it was kind of weird, because I had grown so much, and he also pretty, gr he also grew as well, and we really didn't know how to interact with each other at this point. Sam knew me as just the innocent child I was, and now I'm a, I'm pretty much a teenager st struggling with the struggles of life. Yeah. Um, and I understand, and I'm still not even sure how to react to him because I used to be like, 
I thought I was the annoying younger sister when I was younger, because I would always, like, interrupt him playing games, and I'd always want to sit with him and watch him. And now it's kind of weird, because I'm no longer the person who would just deliberately go and socialize. I would... I mean, I'm okay with socializing and talking with him, but... I don't know, it just feels weird that he's now back. I mean, I'm still glad that he's back, just... It's a bit weird. So we had him on the podcast uh, a few episodes ago for your siblings podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it, it went well. I mean, we, it was more of a question and answer session more than anything else. Yeah. Is it something where you'd want to rekindle that and, and be close to him again and try to get past this kind of awkward stage? I mean, yeah, because the Q&A was mainly focused towards him, and he didn't really get to know too much about me, and immediately when he asked the one question, I just let out with a huge answer that he wasn't even expecting. Yeah, you tend to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I monologue a lot. Okay, well, and, and I think, you know, with Sam coming back uh, into our lives again here, we've, we've all kind of taken it with uh, a bit of caution. You know, we've all sort of played it close to the vest there. We don't want to kind of overstep our bounds and inject any more drama into it as we try to heal these things. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, time heals all wounds, they say. So hopefully with Sam coming back in to our lives on a regular basis now, time will allow us to, to sort of heal those wounds and reform the relationship again. Uh, moving right along to the next awkward question. Uh, do you respect your parents? Yes, I do. I think you guys deserve the respect. Like we said in our respect podcast and a couple podcasts ago, um, respect is normally earned, and especially since you guys have been a part of my life for so long. and Pretty much your whole life. <laughs> yes. Yes, Daddy. Um, kind of funny how that works out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, I definitely think you've earned respect, be my respect, because you guys have been so good to me, you make sure I stay alive, you make sure I'm happy. Legally, we're required to keep you alive, you know. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, but you've done so much other things, like, you always try to make me happy, even when I'm having a bad day, although sometimes you're not m that much of a help because you poke a stick in my cage. <laughs> Yeah, well, we all Looking have Looking at you, Daddy. We all have our hobbies, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next question just sort of naturally flows from that one. Do you argue with your parents? And if you do, why do you argue with me? Well, <laughs> we don't necessarily argue. We don't call it arguing. We call it play fighting. Right. We occasionally have play fights on topics that don't normally cause for any interaction. We just have different opinions, and we have play fights. And we are all welcome to our differences of opinions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the little debates that you and I have are healthy in that it, it kind of forces each of us to look at a, at a situation from a different perspective. Yeah. Uh, what about with mommy? Do you have those kind of heated discussions or arguments or debates with mommy? Unless it's a real group conversation, I don't normally have them with you. I think it's with her. I think it's just sort of a father-daughter thing that we do in yeah, a way. I guess I'm just the lucky <laughs> one, huh? Okay. I don't know. I don't know how many times that um, mommy would really and I would really play fight after this i'll have to try and find out from her yeah go poke a stick in her cage and see what happens <laughs> yeah so um based on those questions do you enjoy spending time with your parents yeah i do when we used to go out i'd enjoy going out to like dave and busters or some restaurants with you guys and then going to concerts as well um, now I enjoy doing rock band with you guys, watching movies with you guys, and overall doing the podcast with you guys. Good, good. Well, I'm glad because there's going to come an age when you're not going to enjoy spending time with us. And I, and I shudder to think that that day is coming sooner than I might want it to. Okay. 
all kids change I like didn't, that. I didn't actually think that would have been your answer. <laughs> I thought it would have been sometime, well, sometime in the future, we're not going to be around to have those happy moments. I oh, guess. wow. So you went really morbid <laughs> on me then. So you're, you're, well, <laughs> you're, you're putting me in the ground here. Okay. Well, at least it. Well, at least it'll come later than you. Th- at least it'll come later than you think of the time that we're not going to and en- that I'm not going to enjoy spending time with you guys because that is true. Yeah. So this is kind of an odd question, and, and I can kind of elaborate if you want. But do your parents get you? Well, I mean, you understand. Um, my hobbies and everything, and especially when I was in sixth grade, I kind of needed you guys to get me so that you could un- help me cope through my problems at that point. And you did a very well jo- good job at it, so I'd say you guys kind of get me. Um, you understand, like, my hobbies and my interests and also my weak points and dislikes, so I'd if you're talking about that kind of stuff, I'd say you guys get me. Okay. And I asked that because, like, I was very close to my mom, and I don't think she ever really got me when I was your age, but she was incredibly tolerant. And she was kind enough to give me the freedom that I needed to understand who I was, even if she didn't understand who I was. And it wasn't until later in life, in my, probably in my adult years, that I actually understood and appreciated the freedom and the space that she gave me to explore the person that I was. And then going through that with Sam, I I kind of realized that I didn't give him that space and I didn't get him. And that's sort of what led to a lot of that drama. So, just kind of curious, sort of a sanity check on my part here as to how well we're getting along. Um, Speaking of parents, you know, my parents argued almost on a regular basis, uh, thanks largely to my father. Do mommy and I argue a lot? Is that, does it cause tension and stuff like that? Um, not really. You guys argue more than you and I argue, but you also have a lot of play fights as well. You guys don't normally argue on big things. At least not that I know of unless you're hiding something from me. I think you guys just have play fights and it's kind of funny to watch if I have to be honest. Okay. Do you think mommy and daddy love each other? I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys love each other. You're still together. There you hug and kiss each other, you have... Despite and the fact that it makes you very uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> You're not big on public dis- displays of affection. Not really, no. Mm. Um, so I'm assuming you guys still love each other. I'm not the complete judge of it, but I think you guys love each other unless, once again, you're hiding something from me. Well, I'm pretty sure you got that one right on the nose, too. Awesome. Have you ever gotten angry at your parents? Um, not intentionally. I've never wanted to get intentionally angry with you guys. It's just when I had uncontrollable mood swings, I would get angry at little things that you guys told me to do. Um, And you'd hulk out, huh? No, I mean, mm, I'd sort of have hulk out... I would have hulked out for about a minute, and then I would have immediately got, and then I would have immediately regretted it, and just um, turned into a ball of absolute, and I would just have sobbed. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those times. Good times. <laughs> yeah, good times. That was the best time. Ever. That was fun. <sighs> yeah. Um, so, we talk about, you know, you having different traits of mommy and daddy. You've got mommy's nose you've got i'd say my mouth but people will take that the wrong way no i have mommy's mouth i have a small mouth uh you've got my ears and my eyes and your hair i don't have hair sweetie but (laughs) i mean the color you used to have blonde hair when you were younger that's true 
So what is the one trait that mommy and I have, not necessarily that we have the same trait, but a trait that she has and a trait that I have that you'd like to have? Well, I would like to have your ability to cope with problems. I'm still kind of going through how to work out problems. Um, you always say to work the problem. I don't normally do that. I'm more on the emotional side of that aspect, so I'm hoping at one point I'll actually be able to work out the problem and do all the steps that you um, do when you have a problem. And uh, um, So yeah, that's what I would want from you. As for Mommy, I'd want her ability to be organized and tolerable because she is able to get us out the door when we need to already and she tolerates us so <laughs> <laughs> that she does and she is very organized especially when we're planning a disney vacation she plans it like a military expedition yes uh, the one advantage is both of those traits are acquired traits so through uh, training education and practice they're absolutely things that you can master yourself. Awesome. I think we've asked you this in the past, but do you want to have children or be a parent someday in the future? Well, I remember when we were talking about my future plans, I had said that I wanted to adopt a child. I never really thought of having children the normal way because... Learning from other, uh, learning from mommy and how everything works. I don't necessarily want to go through all that pain just to have a child with the fact that I can adopt one. Um, plus, I'm not necessarily thinking of getting married anytime in the future, so adoption would have. I, I mean, I've always. I want to be a parent. I just want to take care of someone who would need it. Um, and I. And I think adoption would have worked out, so. Well, and, you know, the one thing about childbirth, and obviously I can't speak from experience, thankfully, <laughs> but the one thing that it has been scientifically proven about childbirth is that women who go through childbirth, their brains actually block out the memory of the worst of the pain. So your body actually has its own defensive mechanisms. Now, in saying that, that doesn't mean that you don't go through the pain. Yeah. You do. Uh, but in looking back on it, women who have gone through childbirth have a very different remembrance of childbirth uh, than the pain aspect of it. Ah. Uh, but I totally understand you're not wanting to go through that. Um, and do adoption is a perfectly legitimate alternative to it. There are a lot of children out there uh, who do not aren't fortunate enough to have two parents that love them who could benefit from someone who is uh, mature and caring and loving. And a lot of kids need to be adopted. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you'd make a good parent? Well, I have. Well, the qualities I have now, I'd be able to cook for them. Um... As long as they want spaghetti. <laughs> I can also make sandwiches, thank you very much. And I can also make microwave food. So I can make and more waffles. Than just, and waffles and pancakes. And eggs now. So I breakfast. Can. You're good with breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pretty much. So I'd cook for them. Um I try to make sure that they are happy and that they have fun. I'd like to think of myself as fun and entertaining. Um, I'd be understanding if they had any problems, like bullies or any mental issues. I'd be accepting if they decided that they were part of, like, you know, the LGBTQ community. I'd be totally accepting for them. I'd always accept them. I'd accept anyone, actually. I just really... And I'd also be accepting any of their ideas, as long as they're not hurting themselves, anyone, or anything. Okay, well, I think that's... I also don't have a lot of things planned out, like, I don't have a house, I don't have a steady income, and uh, some um, skills I haven't intentionally learned about parenting yet. Well, you got some time. Yeah. No need to rush. 
Yeah. So the last question that I have um, is, if there was one thing you could change about each of your parents, what would it be? Well, some people would think I would change any of the mistakes in either of you. Like Mistakes? I don't make mistakes. What are you talking about? Like the fact that you scream at technology when I don't think that's work. a mistake. I just think that's a way of coping. Yeah. Well, and to that I'd say, no, I won't change the mistakes. Because, like you say, you accept mistakes as long as you learn from them. And by screaming at technology and calming yourself down, you realize that... Oh, wait, I needed to do this thing to get the technology working. So sometimes you need to blow off that steam. Same goes with mommy. I don't have exact examples because... Because she's more perfect than I am. <laughs> I mean... Her mistakes aren't quite as glaring as mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she hides her mistakes. Okay, fair enough. All right, well, that was all the questions that we have. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back, and we will get your closing remarks and your shout-outs. Alrighty. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. And go for your closing remarks and shout outs. Alrighty, so... Since today was all about relationships and friends and family, I'll basically make my closing remarks off of that. So, keep your friends and family close. Um, keep your enemies even closer. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that saying. Um, even if you aren't close with some of your friends or some of your family, there will be some people out there that will accept you for who you are and that will always stand by you. That's it? Yeah. All I right. was wondering if you were going to sing that one song like, Stand By Me. <laughs> no, no, but you're, you're doing strong. a good job of it. <laughs> Look at that. Another talent you got there. Eh, sort of. It's a hidden talent that not many people know about. Nice. Well, you do like to sing occasionally on rock band, so. Mm. Uh, so that was it for today, right? You have anything else? Um, I'll just shout out to all my friends and family right now and hope they're all doing well. Okay. Good enough. Uh, we do ask that you subscribe to us on your favorite podcast uh, platform so you can get our podcast when they go live, as soon as they go live. They go live Mondays at 8 a.m. Uh, otherwise, we would love to hear from you and get your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get all of our videos, high resolution videos on youtube.com slash insights into things. Uh, if you're into the evil empire, you can get us at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can catch all of our audio at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. We do stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Or you can get all that stuff on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you can also check out our long-form articles on medium.com at medium.com slash insights into things. And you. <laughs> and don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Nice. And that's it. We are done. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>